Hare Krishna. Guess I should get some lights in here, huh? First of all, Brindayai Tulasi Deviyai Priyaviyai Keshavasacha Vishnu Bhakti Pradi Devi Sattavatta Enamo Namaha Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai. The worship of Tulsi nullifies sins. I always like to mention that for some reason. Like, anytime you're connected with Tulsi, it's a special thing. I'm going to turn on some lights, you know. Get a little light in here. And show you the deities. Shri Shri Hari Halad Hari. Once again, I can't see because I got the camera on reverse. I hope it all looks beautiful to you. That's Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. You got Lord Narsingha. He has Lakshmi on his lap. He has Bhakta Prahlad down to his left. And then you have Maharaj Prahlad in the swing. And we have over here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we have Prabhu Nityananda. And we have the Guru Parampara. And others added on to the Parampara. So... Um, a lot of people have been asking me to make more videos and make more videos. And I told them I used to make a whole lot of videos. But I said as the quantity went down, I was hoping that the quality went up. So I'm hoping that the quality of my videos will be better each each time. You know what I mean? So also, like, I don't really have too many subjects that I have on mine. So I just decided I'm going to start freestyling on my videos, you know, just off the top of the head. I can't rhyme off the top of my head, but I could definitely freestyle some information off the top of my head. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do. This is a yoga center. This is a, a center where we do something called bhakti yoga. And bhakti is service done with the view in mind of the reciprocation of love and devotion. So we want to show love. to. First of all, yesterday was my birthday, right? My parents' day. It was April 28th. And as a result, April 28th, 2016, something happened that hasn't happened in, I believe, over 10 years or X amount of years. But apparently five planets are in retrograde right now. Five planets. Usually people trip out when they hear that Mercury is in retrograde because that's the planet of communication. But not only is Mercury, but so many other planets right now are moving backwards in relative to the position of the people on the planet Earth that people are really tripping out. People are really scared. But for some reason, I feel enlightened and empowered that five planets are moving backwards because, you know, let's understand what's going on. First of all, you have Krishna's internal energy. That's the spiritual, eternal, absolute plane. And this is the world of Asat. This is the world of without truth, without reality, without permanence. It's all temporary here. It's all illusory in this material world because it's Krishna's external energy. It comes from Krishna, but to understand the difference between spiritual energy and material energy and how it ties into us being in this bhakti yoga center is simple. We take this essence called bhakti, this word called bhaj. Baj is different from worship. Worship can be applied to any man, woman, child, object, animate, inanimate, demon, angel. Worship worship is just something you can do for a great person. People have been worshiping Prince since he passed on recently, right? So we're not looking for the word worship because this word worship is like puja. And puja is business. Basically, you give something to Lakshmi. By the way, speaking of business... The deities are wearing blue, and blue is a special color because that rep generally is taken to represent the throat chakra. And that's the domain of Saraswati. So all of your flow, everything comes from here, the throat area. Whether it's verbal flow or it's, remember, you got some important glands in this area, right? And these glands are connected. They deal with so many hormones, sex hormones and regulatory hormones are all regulated from the throat area. So in the beginning was the word and word was with God. That's very important because wherever that blue chakra, whenever that blue chakra is functioning good, generally the body is functioning good. So this word puja is business. I give something to Saraswati. I give something to Lakshmi. I give something to Ogun. I give something to Alegua because I have a view in mind to receive something else. But baj is done. Baja, bajante, bhakti is done without a view of receiving anything, at least material in return. So all of these planets are moving in retrograde right now People are tripping out Well let me tell you something You're in luck You're blessed 
You see him? His name is Hanuman. I hope you can see it clearly. Hanuman, very, very important. They call him Ram Bhakta. Well, let me tell you a little story about him. So one day he was flying over the island of Lanka and these demons, these criminals, these mudhas, these nara adhamas, these, 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 um, duskritinas, they set his tail on fire to punish like you're going to punish a devotee of Ram. You think this is a game that's happened about 1.72 million years ago on the island of Ceylon. They set his tail on fire. What they didn't realize was that they was dealing with the highest grade, a person who's perfected all of his mystical siddhis. Siddhis are powers. Like when you graduate from Kung Fu class, you get your black belt. That's your siddhi. That's your perfection of Kung Fu. But once you get to the top of that form of Kung Fu, you find out there's so many other forms of Kung Fu. Well, the same thing is happening with yoga. Once you get the power to walk on water or to reach out and touch the moon with the tip of your finger or to grab stuff off of somebody's plate who lives a thousand miles away or on the other side of the planet, like there's so many mystical siddhis that you can attain. And you might say, well, this guy's a space cadet. I knew Caprice when he was like 17, when he was a Muslim. He's a space cadet back then. Exactly. And that's what helped me find this path. So being a space cadet that I am, I'm going to research these mystical paths, right? And these mystical cities have a lot in common. But to break it down on a level where we're at, remember I spoke about, first of all, let's deal with absolute and the non-absolute. You have Krishna's external energy, which is this material world. The material world is represented by the number zero. Zero plus zero is zero, zero. Take away zero is zero, zero. Divided by zero is zero, and zero multiplied by zero is zero. So you can take a trillion zeros and add three zeros, and guess what that equals? Zero. When you add the number one, although it's only the number one, you add one to zero, and you got ten. You add another zero to that one, and already the power is multiplied by ten. You add another zero and already that number is multiplied by 10 so when we're dealing with the internal the original person the supreme personality of godhead he is the one to which all of us yoga ourselves bind this material energy to the one and it becomes multiplied in power that's why you can see a person in the body right you see a person five years ago they could have been doing great things with their lives or mediocre things with their lives or whatever but once they add that Krishna aspect to their lives, it becomes transcendental. They have an energy about them. They have a je ne sais quoi, je ne sais que. They have a I don't know what it is. They have a mojo. Because once you add yourself to Krishna, to the original one, you go from zero to being manifested spiritual energy. Right now, most of us are just dealing with the external energy. Eating, sleeping, drinking, mating, and defending. To mate, you have to have a house. So that requires financial security. You have to be physically strong. So you got to eat the right things. You know? So there's so many things that goes into attracting a mate and a family. These are animal concerns. Not saying we don't need it. You need some of these things. These are basic things that the body needs. But beyond that, you need the internal energy. And that's where yoga comes in. So I come to this yoga studio every week. And Prabhupada says that... By doing this bhakti or this devotional yoga, you get the benefits of all the other forms of yoga. Now, I can tell you in a practical way how that's true. Because the Chinese, the Asians teach that if you breathe deeper or if you breathe better, you live better and you live longer. This is what the Chinese teach. Now, what I found out with the Vedic system is that your life is not measured in years, but it's measured in what? Breath. The amount of breaths you take. So you're given a certain amount of breaths. So how do we improve the quality of our life? And how do we extend the duration of our life automatically? By chanting mantras. For example, if you know anything about beats or rhyming, there's like 16 bars or 32 bars. And all of these go into the amount of the count of a 4 beat or an 8 beat. What I notice about the Hare Krishna mantra is because it goes Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That's 32 syllables. So what happens is by the time you inhale and you saying this mantra in one take, 
you're exhaling all of the energy out of your lungs and then you got to inhale again. So instead of breathing shallow, like people who are stressed out or people who are afraid or people who are in pain, you're breathing deep and you're breathing longer. So just like it says in the Srimad Bhagavatam, I believe it's the sixth canto, that devotional service can extend the duration of your life. That right there is just a practical example. Even the king of death said, listen, I don't have any jurisdiction over the Ram Bhaktas. I don't have any jurisdiction over the Krishna Bhaktas and neither do you my servants the Yamadutas neither does check this out Osiris Yamaraj king of the dead even said that even time itself does not have jurisdiction over the devotees of Krishna so anyway we're in speaking of time so we're dealing with cycles and we're under a quintuplet retrograde motion this is what they said that the positive things about this five degree fifth degree fifth dimensional retrograde motion in our solar system right now and the good thing about it they said is that it's a time of revelation truths will be revealed people's emotions will be revealed things that have been hidden for a long time or things that wasn't meant to be put out there in the public is about to be revealed as a result of this retrograde motion of the stars so i think that um everybody should get ready and don't worry about any malignant movement of the stars if you're a Rambakta because once again they set Hanuman's tail on fire and he's running around through the whole city of Lanka a city of gold Ravana's city of gold and he's setting it afire with his tail with his tail and you say well how come the fire didn't burn him well simple Sita when she found out that they had set the monkey man on fire prayed to the deity of fire Agni, and she asked him, please let your fire be what? As cool as water to Hanuman. And of course, once again, there we go with that prayer and that worship again. Prayer requires, worship requires, puja requires reciprocity on a material or a subtle level. So for Sita to get these prayers answered, what did she have to give to the God Agni? Dave, Agni Dave. She had to give him the results of all of her good austerities. So another thing about bhakti or devotional services, your benefits are transferable. You can transfer the benefits of your good deeds or your good austerities for the benefit of someone else, someone you love, someone who's sick, someone who needs a little boost in their devotional life or their financial life or sexual life, whatever it is that the person needs, you can transfer benefits to them. And we learned that in the Ramayana from Sita. So, she transferred these benefits to Hanuman. The fire was no longer burning him. He's setting places on fire. But what happened when he went over the house of, I think his name is Vidura, but I, I'm, I could be wrong. But there was one person in the city who Hanuman did not burn down his house. Do you know why? Because Hanuman heard the holy names of Ram being chanted there. And we have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 500 years ago who inaugurated the age of chanting for deliverance from the fallen sinful effects of Kali Yu. And he also said, Kirtaniya Sadahari. Right? Kirtaniya Sadahari. So we are supposed to always be talking about God, describing God, meditating on God, chanting God, singing God, working for God, all of these different forms of kirtan, descriptions of the glorious personality of Godhead, supreme personality of Godhead, is what's supposed to occupy our time in Kali Yuga because life is mad short in this age. Honestly, I'm gonna be keeping 100. Y'all really don't have a lot of time for fun. You know what I'm saying? You know the next president is gonna spell doom for America. You know what I'm saying? Come on, let's just be realistic. There's not much left for America to work with. Anyway, I don't want to get political. I just want to say that through the auspices of the Supreme Ram Bhakta himself, Hanuman, so many people will escape the effects of... What are you pointing at? Yes, yeah, that's going to be hard for them to see. So many people are going to uh, escape the negative effects of this retrograde motion of the stars. My personal suggestion is always the same thing. Chant Hare Krishna because that's the activation mantra. It'll, it'll put the gears, the wheels will start spinning and your life will become Krishna eyes from an atomic level, from a subatomic level, from a transcendental level. 
okay? And all of these mystical cities and potencies that people are seeking after, whether it's to activate your kundalini or to regress to your past lives <coughs> or to find out who you really are on a spiritual level, all of these things, the process has begun once we approach the Supreme Person. Because you can go to a yoga studio and spend 50 years perfecting one kind of yoga. And then you get your black belt and you're near the age of death. And you're like, man, I did this yoga for 30 years and all I know how to do is drink water while sitting in a handstand, in a headstand. Like, that's all you could get? Uh, you could walk on water? Good. You can't bring back the dead. So there's so many different things that you're not benefiting yourself by practicing one form of yoga. But if you practice bhakti yoga, you get all of those benefits. Plus, you're on the path to getting the supreme absolute reward, which is the highest form of yoga, which is simply love of God, which takes at least five different forms. So I just wanted to share this information with you that there's a five planet retrograde. And that anybody who studies the science of Hanuman will be automatically protected if they serve the same Supreme Lord, that Hanuman. One thing with the Vedic system is that all of these deities and these demigods and these sages, they tend to look out for the devotees of God. They don't, they don't leave you down. They, they never leave you out. They always take care of you. It seems the devotees exist to serve other devotees. So once you start getting in contact with Krishna consciousness, they can see your light. They can see your energy signature. And they will help you out, especially in moments you need it the most. If anybody has any questions, feel free to drop comments on the video or inbox me, what have you. Or you can also look at www.asit. I-S as it is, dot com. Hare Krishna.